The most powerful single-shot weapons in Cyberpunk 2077 are of course sniper rifles, allowing you to either camp from safety and utterly beam everyone, or get more in the action with excellent timing and precision. As always, I took a detailed look into each so you don't have to. Here's how to acquire and properly use every sniper, presented in the order of what I believe to be worst to best. Let's get to it. The build I mostly used is practically identical to the one I did for precision rifles, with 20 cool and all the sniper perks of course. I also one time took the sneaking and stealth ones but only for the silenced overwatch sniper. Then with 20 tech I took the cyberware perks including edge runner and only when using tech guns bolt shot tech perks, as well as perks to buff heals and when using the 05 sniper I also spec'd into pyromania, then air dash from reflexes and health regen from body as always. On the a couple of occasions where I used the Asura smart guns, I did instead run with 15 cool and tech, so that I could also spec into smart gun buffing perks from intelligence. Unless you're running with those though, keep intelligence down at 3. Into cyberware, and again it's a chrome compressor build for maximum power and protection. A cyberdeck build with ping might be easier, but instead I just used oracle optics and tagged enemies as I saw them. Deep field interface of course for long range crits, and Korenzikov with its supportware for steadier shots. Optical camo can also be useful for hiding, and axolotl if you can afford it. That's the general gist of things, so now onto the guns. First up, Bulgea is an interesting one. An iconic variant of the bolt action grad sniper, you can find this thing at a specific airdrop in the Golden Pacific region of Dogtown. There's no specific trigger, I don't think, so just wait and watch. Personally though, I would only be after this one for completionism. It's okay, serving as a more mid-range sniper thanks to the scope, with shots being explosive and punchy, though it's an explosiveness that can't proc pyromania as far as I can tell. As part of the Tektronica weapon set, it ignites enemies with this unique flame which then deals critical damage on subsequent hits. A pretty cool ability with some of the other weapons from this series, I've covered them in their respective videos, but for a sniper it's a little less relevant. When so many other sniper entries can destroy most everyone with a simple headshot, follow up fire isn't something you want to or need to be doing. However, with just a 200% headshot multiplier, headshots with this are not nearly as effective as other guns on this list, including just the regular grads, whilst this gun also has a smaller range of effectiveness. I wondered perhaps if it was more designed to do splash damage, though compared to the 05 or the Osprey, it's kind of inferior in one regard or the other. It does look kinda cool, setting your enemies on fire with 50% burn chance, but when it comes down to literal effectiveness, this just sits pretty low. In fact, it feels similar to the hypercritical precision rifle, just not quite as good. 05 is another odd one in 2.0. On the one hand, it's practically a grenade launcher with just how explosive each shot is. On the other, it is the most cumbersome weapon in the entire game, removing the abilities to sprint and dash, which for me felt utterly debilitating. And a knock-on effect of removing the dash is that Korenzikov cannot be activated. Not that perfect accuracy is quite so important here though. After all, the whole point of this gun is to fire it into larger groups, proc burn damage, increasing our crit chance and reload speed as we do. As far as guns for sprinting past enemies and darting around at the edge of combat go, this is unequivocally not the one for that. Rather, you'll want to find a high vantage point and just fire away on everyone in your line of sight. Up against max tack, it's about as effective as any of the other snipers, with the benefits of not requiring headshots. However, shots will explode on their first impact and you may have to relocate to several different points throughout a fight. Sheathing or switching guns will get you around as normal, and if you want to use this a lot, get used to doing that all the time. It really is a very powerful thing to fire, just so long as you remember and respect the debuffs. Not so good in the later game I wouldn't say, where you can land such high damage precise headshots all the time, but do give it a go from mid game after you win it from Buck Arnold in Beat on the Brat Arroyo, either by betting him for it or just taking his crew down afterwards. Though the thing about this is an alternative, highly explosive but much more mobile build can be unlocked by just equipping the projectile arm launcher. Sure, it does about half the explosion damage, but with the jailbreak relic perk, you can fire five shots in a row anyway. Stack that with the pyromania perks, and it'll also be much quicker to fire than the 05, though granted not quite so precise.
If you're wanting to go full stealth sniper, then your best options are probably the Pride Pistol or Manchineo Revolver. But if you want a sniper with a very long range scope, as usual, you can attempt to use Overwatch, the only actual sniper to come with a silencer and that same 300% headshot multiplier, but also, unfortunately, significantly lower damage than the regular grad, as well as seemingly no added stealth multiplier. Weirdly, though it still can get you by in stealthy scenarios better than any of the others at least. Its big problems are lower damage paired with that long bolt action after every shot. If you don't insta-kill an enemy, then they will detect you, but unlike Pride and Manginella, we can't immediately fire again to finish the job, having to wait for the bolt. The concept is all there, and on lower difficulties perhaps can work okay, but on very hard, it is simply too weak to be fully effective. Level 1 and 2 enemies are fine, but Skull level and above will probably end your stealth run, at which point you may as well just switch back to a more powerful variant like the base grad or necromata. Though this one does also reload and handle noticeably better, but that really doesn't mean anything when it just takes more shots to down enemies, rendering it kind of just another inferior grad. Though granted, one we do get for free as a gift from Pan Am pretty early on for completing the riders on the storm quest, so maybe worth using for a bit until you can find a more powerful alternative. Hell, it'd be a fantastic gun if only it did more more damage from stealth like anything else sporting a silencer, and hopefully that gets patched in before this game gets fully put down and left. And if it has been by the time you come to watch this video, then maybe just shift it up a couple spots. The Osprey may be a high quality, large and explosively brilliant weapon, but honestly, it feels a little out of place on the snipers list. I'd probably describe it more as a battle rifle, which is far more optimally used at mid and even close range. You see, similar to the Hercules AR, this gun has two firing modes. Down the sight will shoot a non-negotiable triple burst, there's 12 shots per mag, so four of those before a very lengthy reload. Or alternatively, firing from the hip will still allow for one shot headshot shots on most enemies below skull level. This is why I say it's mid to close range. Funnily enough, landing headshots with naught but the crosshair from a distance is a little tougher than aiming with a scope, and doing that with this gun, whilst explosive, usually isn't quite as effective shot for shot as a perfect hip fire. We can also just fire automatically from the hip, but that's even more inaccurate still, and liable to waste more ammo, with sniper ammunition still capped at about 175. There are a better better range of choices with this gun than the Borgia, and still having the option for precise headshots unlike 05 puts it above that in my opinion. But you will definitely burn through ammo and constantly have to reload unlike you would when using the Hercules say, which again feels like a very similar gun despite being classed as an assault rifle. Clearly this is best used against masses of foes, that's where it thrives, and doing so will also proc a high chance to burn as well as an increased reload speed, which is very appreciated especially when going full auto mode. Like I say, it's a battle rifle in all but name, and I suppose the scoped triple shot does mean it can operate somewhat at all the different ranges. Possibly more worth slotting into a Sandeviston build as well, since Kerenzikov can't of course be activated for hipfire headshots, because it can't aim. What's more, it's available completely free, but easily missed during Phantom Liberty, found in the safe house under the moth bar in this crate here. If you didn't pick it up during Birds with broken wings though, it is retrievable any other time, during and possibly after completing the main questline. Want to experience the splash damage effect of bolt shots, but can't be bothered to be dealing with all those tech perks or indeed timing the charges right, well then you'll want to pick up Sparky, our prize for completing the increased criminal activity up in Terra Cognita. After downing the Scavs drone, we can loot their cache to obtain this. It's another grad variant, though the unchangeable percipient scope suggests it's more optimised for mid-range combat, though I found it okay at long range as well. Not as optimal as a regular grad scope though, given every thing is a little less clear, and overall I'd say it's a bit of a mark down for it. But a mark up on the other hand, on account of headshots emitting an electrical bolt to damage another two nearby enemies, potentially felling more foes in less shots if firing into larger groups. It's not as mesmerizing to look at as a tech bolt shot, but equally we can just fire at full power whenever ready. Not that this gun escapes the general slowness of the grads, indeed every shot requires a bolt action and a slow 
slow reload comes after every fall. Bear in mind, we may be firing from closer range with this, and you'll be wanting to stick to cover a lot. And whilst the bonus shock and splash damage is nice, it does come with a small reduction in headshot damage of 50%, down to 250 rather than the regular 300. Overall, it almost, almost beats the regular grad as a kind of power bolt tech hybrid, but on account of the worse scope and not being moddable at all, I think it just about falls short. Are you loving the look of all these one-shot kills but simply cannot be bothered or aren't quite pulling off perfect headshots all the time? Then Ashura may just be your solution. The only smart sniper rifle in the game, this gun will afford you those headshots simply for aiming in an enemy's general direction. Granted, it may sometimes aim for other spots if it can't locate the head, but moving slightly will hopefully reposition it. It was still capable of pulling off those one-shot kills, save for on the strongest of enemies. Base damage is much higher, around 370, but equally, there's only a 150% headshot multiplier, so it actually works out as less powerful if you were landing headshots all the time. And whilst it took a few more shots to defeat MaxHack, it dispatched them fairly quickly too. In fact, in a way, I preferred fighting them with this since the stress was taken off of aiming and I could just focus on positioning and avoiding damage. This one is going to involve plenty of dashing around since we have to reload after every single shot. Significantly slower, but also easier to use when out in the open. But I know these bullets are supposed to bend around cover, though they don't always do that. And in this Voodoo Boy hideout say, I found myself needing to reposition a lot. Of course, as a smart weapon, we can get smart mods, like the Chimera Core Hakatomy, which I probably wouldn't recommend on this particular gun actually, as it kills most enemies before it gets the chance to hack them. Headhopper is an okay choice, we don't get the bonus targets of course, but the extra speed and headshot damage does help. Gambatia I'd also avoid so we don't reduce homing probability for our one shots, whilst Panorama again doesn't add much here. And the three potential mods I would personally run with are either Headhopper, Head Toll, or Equalizer. What I'm also going to mention in this entry is Yasha, which is basically an Xmod 2 variant with a name. Not quite different enough to classify as a separate thing in my opinion, plus it was only available during the Twitch event back in October. If you don't have it though, and you're on PC, just plug in this little console commands. It has better handling, but a reduced range, and the biggest benefit is as an Xmod 2, we can overwrite existing mods and test out different ones. But using it side by side with Ashura, there's not really any difference, so don't worry if you missed it. Instead, get the regular crafting spec from the suspected crime Desperate Sons of Bitches in Rancho Coronado. So then, the closest thing to a basic classic sniper now, and my god does the SPT-32 Grad pack some power in 2.0. This base version is actually one of the highest damage guns in the entire game, and pairing that with 50% armor penetration and a 300% headshot multiplier, there are few other guns that can land one-shot headshots quite like this can. It's even capable of dropping max tack members after about 5 hits, with a fixed Kanone max scope to ensure maximum vision in all lightings. Just get to a safe vantage point with some cover, and provided you're a semi-decent shot, just fire away. Perenzikov or even Sandeviston can help a lot here, but another aid to use is just the focus perks from Cool. There's honestly few guns I've tested in this game that have felt quite as effective as this one, though of course there's a couple small caveats. Firstly, this is classed as a heavy weapon, slightly reducing our movement overall whilst holding it. Not a huge issue, especially given it's usually fired from still at a distance but if it is bothersome, just fix it by slapping on a fleet shot mod at the cost of a little less armor penetration. Also, this gun feels heavy with a super long reload time and only four bullets. Granted, that's probably four whole kills if accurate enough, but it's still a lot of time spent reloading. If you saw Precision Rifles ranked, then this shares a lot of similarities that I discussed with the Hypercritical, an explosive beast of a gun that's also slow. But provided I could just fire from mid to long range, this ease beats that, in my opinion, depending on how skilled you are at landing headshots. Fittingly, the crafting spec is bought at the Aldecaldo camp, or it's a pretty common drop in general. One other big change to this gun in 2.0 though, is that it now rarely shoots through walls, but rather ricochets like a regular power gun. It's gone through a couple things once or twice with seemingly no pattern, but overall allows tech snipers to maintain their primary advantage.
I might be getting ahead of myself with this one, since it's not technically attainable in the game yet, but Foxhound is item 6 in the red painted series of Prime Gaming Barghast Weapons, which I'll assume will become available in late February. All it essentially is though, like all the others in this series, is an iconic Barghast variant, this time of a Necomata, and thus has all the features and statistics of that readily available gun. Higher damage and handling than the regular, but just 3 shots, where the Foxhound gains a specific advantage then is in that same movement speed increase we've seen with the rest of these guns. Every kill increases our speed a little up to a max of 20%, with higher speed then contributing to bonus damage up to 25%. Not nearly as appreciated with a sniper compared to some of the other weapons. After all, we'll mostly be standing still and camping, but to be fair I still found myself dashing around a fair amount with this, and it's better to have the ability than not. Basically if slash when you do have this one available, take it over an unmodded Necromata, but if not, it's really no biggie. Provided you have Amazon Prime though, you'll be able to redeem it through Prime Gaming once it drops. And if watching before or after that window, and you're on PC, instead just use this console command, if for no other reason than to appreciate the design. I'm afraid despite how powerful and satisfying the grad is to use, a one-shot headshotting sniper that can penetrate cover is still going to beat a higher damage one that can't. After all, a kill is a kill, and the Necromata sniper merely serves to expand our options. I wondered if a ping build would be better for such a thing to see enemy outlines more, but overall I'd say keep the benefits of the chrome compressor and just tag enemies as you see them by clicking the scroll wheel. It's utterly crazy just how much solid material you can shoot through with this gun. So much so that I'd argue it can be boring to just hide behind cover shooting at a red outline displayed behind a wall. But that really is what this gun is all about a lot of the time. Not able to be crafted, the Necromata has two common variants. The first I bought from Sophia at the stadium, whilst the Barghest version I then bought from Herald, also at the stadium. Those without Phantom Liberty though can still find the first of the two around Night City. As I said with the Foxhound, the Barghest variant though, handles better, charges quicker, and shoots through 25% more armour. Though if you're competent with landing headshots, I'd possibly just stick with the regular, with 4 bullets per mag as opposed to Barghest's 3. Doesn't seem like a tremendous difference, I know, but it is. It's a whole nother kill before reloading, which itself is still a fair bit quicker as well than the Grad. Though unlike the Grad, this gun comes instead with a built-in Prospector scope, offering similar night vision but with more of a blue tint than a Grad. Green. Additionally, if out in the open with the relevant perks, this one can instead fire bolt shots before full charge. Still one shot on a target, but then dealing additional splash damage to those nearby. Plus, you can slap the Wall Puncher Chimera mod on for greater damage still. Not that you need it, but the base variants being moddable are what put them above the iconic Foxhound in my opinion. The coolest looking thing, resemblant of a railgun I'd say, Rosetsu is a tech sniper that arguably prompts greater efficiency than any other, removing the ability to shoot through walls, meaning instead, like with the Grad, we have to get a clear shot. But in place of wall punching shots, projectiles will instead, after hitting the first enemy, curve to hit the surrounding ones. It's similar to the bolt shot effect, or Sparky, but better. Firstly, because bolt shot itself still seems to work with this tech gun, granting even more collateral and second, because Rosetsu is by far the highest damage tech sniper of the game, well above the Necromata and about the same amount below the Grads. Factor in the splash damage though, and it's certainly a speedier gun to dispatch enemies than both, feeling a lot more powerful if you're patient enough to let it fully charge. And I took down multiple max tax squads in record time with this thing, with the scope also being a top of the range useful piece of kit, with a charged circle being much easier to read when taking shots than anything the other guns have. It is only 3 shots per mag, but reload time actually feels fairly swift. Not great, but not terrible. It's just a brilliant looking piece of kit, and best of all, it's obtained absolutely free through the Phantom Liberty main quest, where we'll first use it as a silenced, very long range thing to play Recon for Reed. It's just a shame that it doesn't stay silenced once removed. It would have been nice to have a good silenced sniper, but still, without a doubt, one of the best best ones you can possibly acquire. Just watch the charge time and try to keep it at long range. It's a very zoomy scope.
The ultimate iteration of the Nekamata, and best sniper in the game then, is, and always has been, the iconic breakthrough, at least in my opinion. The spec for which you can obtain via the suspected crime, new boss, new rules, over in Rancho Coronado, dropped by a patriotic looking 6th streeter, ironically named Olga. Breakthrough, whilst remarkably similar in basic stats, takes the wall punching of tech weapons a step further, firing through walls at any level of charge, including none at all, and then also going on to ricochet. There's a lot of snipers that deal bonus afterburner damage in their own way, and this is another unique iteration of that. But as a tech weapon that doesn't need charging and still works great at whatever range, this is a perfect pairing with Karenzikov, of course, and would also be perfect in a pinged Netrunner build too, but equally the Oracle optics helped me to see foes all the same. And look at this, taking out enemies through several feet of solid material, it's just crazy. Not only that, but Breakthrough's armor penetration is also 100%, so it ignores that too for extra damage, and is an instant headshot kill on all regular enemies, same as the Necomata and the Grats. It's just that it also breaks through everything, and since it does so at any given charge, that also appears to mean wall penetrating bolt shots, which can afterwards deal splash damage and maybe then ricochet too. Basically it's the ultimate love child of power and tech, and my only complaint really would be that it simply makes the game too easy. I mean, you can literally hide in a box, shoot through the walls, and still get all the benefits like ricochet and bolts that you'd normally lose out on by doing so. So let me know in the comments whether or not you agree, and which sniper is your general go-to. Thank you as always to the patrons for keeping the channel alive, and subscribe relatively soon if you haven't already to be one of the first 100k subs. Thank you for watching, I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.